Hey guys, Daniel James here, and what I'd like to do today is to take a look at Cine Sample's new sample library, uh, Cine Brass Pro. Uh, Cine Brass Pro is the follow-up to their uh, original brass library, Cine Brass, and it's well, it's it's not so much a follow-up as it is like an expansion to the original. Um, what it features is mainly uh, some of the articulations that uh, you know that users requested from the first one that were missing, like uh, like the solo trombones or tuba solo and things like this but they've also added some um, extra things that people didn't necessarily ask for but are pretty awesome like the 12 horn ensemble but we'll get into all that a bit later um so first off in the usual video fashion what i've done is written a, a short cue here that's about a minute and a half uh just showing just showing the uh, library in context of a track um it's an action track so if i play this and then we'll talk about the track i've written and then we'll talk about how i've used cine brass pro within it Okay, so here we go. So there we go, there's the uh, short cue I wrote for the track. If you heard any clicks and pops there, I apologise. Uh, for some reason, my uh, screen capturing software is a little bit off, so I ha I've had to uh, record the audio a little bit separately, which is putting a bit of a strain on my CPU. So those clicks and pops aren't coming from the library, they're just coming from my setup at the minute. So uh, so yeah, let's let's take a look at the actual track. So we start off with this uh, this kind of build-up section here, which, uh, which you know builds up into this nice... Uh, big percussive section where I wanted to show off the um, like the low brass and how they can do these big stabby sections. Then we move into a section here where the French horns. I, I wanted to show off the the twelve uh, French horns and how they can sail across the you know the the top of any track. And then uh, I've got this last section here which uh, I really wanted to show off the uh, the low chords. So let's let's go section by section. So we, we've got this first section here, which uh, sounded like this. <laughs> Basically, what I wanted to do was, again, if you've seen my last uh, Cinebrass video, you'd know that I was a big fan of um, how well the the short articulations, uh, how fast the short articulations could go. So I thought I'd put the new uh, solo trombone through its paces. Just to see. I'm not sure if a tr trombone player can play this fast, but um, it sounded fine to me. So I, I, I played this. So this is it soloed out. And basically, I just wanted to show that it can still do fast. But again, this is the um, the same principle as the last cine brass. So basically, the uh, you you've got three uh, different articulate uh, three different articulations based on uh, velocity. So if you look here. If you look at the custom map. Uh, if you push a velocity, you know, between zero and seven, you get um, this staccato. If you push it between, this is hard to demonstrate. I could probably do it like this. So if you've got, uh, as you can see, these numbers down here, uh, <laughs> right, but below where my mouse pointer is right now, it says velocity 23, 23 at the minute. I move that up and down. If you listen to the articulation change, we get over 80. And 
and so essentially what's happening is um, when you cross over that velocity, it, it changes the articulation from staccato, which is the short note, to a longer note, uh, which is called marcato. So you can do, um, you know, lines where you mix the two, you know. Uh, you know, something, you know, just something like that. And so what I've done here is I've got basically I've got staccatos all the way across here. And then we have this nice, as you can see by the protruding uh, velocity thing here, uh, just a little bit of an extension on the on the uh, on the phrase. So it goes. So it basically just hangs over, gives you a little bit of a, uh, just carries it over. And again, this is doubling uh, my string line, which is here. I think I've got that on the cello. And yeah, so I went, when I was writing, I went for this kind of Middle Eastern thing, but that, you know, I lost that vibe halfway through. Uh, and then uh, what I've got down here is this uh, solo uh, uh, tuba, which is just uh, holding down the uh, the actual, the bass uh, pulse, which is... And these are doing marcatos. I mean, I could, I could put them down to staccato if I wanted it sharper, which I probably should have done, really. Yeah. So if you listen here, you, you're actually getting the pulse together. So, you know, you're getting that nice da, 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 da. Uh, okay, and then uh, above it here, we've got uh, the French, uh, the 12 French horn section, but I want to talk about these over here. They're essentially just doing this, uh, this gradual rise. <laughs> fade out but um yeah i'll talk about the, the french horn over here a bit later and then uh, to get out of this section i've got um what they've got called the uh well this is basically two effects in one you've got the, the flutter crescendo which is like basically <laughs> it's hard to explain but like uh when a french horn player kind of goes brrr, like that over the uh when they're blowing so if i find this i need to solo it out <laughs> And then using the mod wheel, I can create a crescendo. So this is basically two. Uh, sorry, like I was saying, it's two effects in one. So you've got the uh, the stopped and flood. And this is uh, the same principle as the articulation patches, where you know if you push short, uh, if you push uh, gently on the key, you get short. If you push hard, you get sustain. So these are the. The short, but I, I use it mainly for the flutter because I, I I really do like this this uh, this type of tone for building crescendo into another section. Um, it, it's it's basically like a typical crescendo, but it it's just got a, a nastier edge to it. And again, this is controlled by the mod wheel, so I can create my own crescendo. If you watch the mod wheel uh, here, I think yeah. If you watch the mod wheel down here, you can see it as I build the crescendo. So. Of course, you can build and lower it. So yeah, that's the cool, uh, you know, fluttered and stopped effects. So yeah, let's move into this next section, which is actually one of my favorite ones because I'm very percussive in my writing. And um, one of like uh, the tricks to getting a really nasty, aggressive, raw, um, rhythmic section is to double the percussion with brass. So if I just solo the section here, it won't sound like much by itself perhaps, but when you put it in context with the uh, with the percussion, it just gives it a nastier kind of melodic edge. So this is what the actual pattern sounds like. So as you can see, it's not a particularly um, complex part, but if you put that in, uh, if you put that in with the uh, percussion here, which is also playing um, a similar pattern, so if I put it here, uh, 
as you can hear, it's creating a nice kind of style. I mean, if I take it away and you listen, uh, listen out for how, listen for the gap of where the brass should be. I, I, uh, I muted, I so soloed and muted it uh, on and off there so that you could hear the difference of what, what you know, a rhythm track sounds like with brass and without. And as you can hear, it's got a really kind of nice, you know, gritty uh, chunk to it. I mean, I think I've just, I mean, in this track I also used a, a bit of damage, but I'll talk about that in another. <laughs> So yeah, um, for this, I, I only used two patches. I actually, uh, I used uh, the solo trombone. Solo trombone actually got a lot of use in this. I'm, I'm actually a big fan of it because because the uh, the stack, uh, the staccato and uh, is very sharp. And I, you know, I love that kind of attack. And again, these, uh, I keep saying, and again, and again, and again. Um, I keep saying, and again, and again. What am I talking about? Anyway, um, trombones, there we go. So, uh, so yeah, when uh, when you push, uh, like I mentioned earlier, so you've got the uh, the, the articulations on the uh, velocity, and uh, what I didn't mention is that these are controlled by the mod wheel. So if I'm doing staccato, I move the mod wheel up and then back down. As you can tell, you get a uh, you know it, that that's controlling the uh, velocity. Of the actual track and so instead of the velocity of the key controlling how loud the note is it they've moved that over to the mod wheel which actually works great so when you've got uh, the mod wheel of velocity all the way up and you're doing staccato you know you've got really sharp attack and uh i actually uh, because they're solos you can normally get away with doing um doing your trombones in, in like threes or if you're a bit more ambitious, you know, in fours. But I've only used two notes here because I uh, I instead decided to double up the tuba. Uh, normally you'd only have one tuba, but because this is my uh, imaginary extravagant orchestra of like a thousand brass players, because that's one of the joys of sampled orchestra. I don't have to pay for extra players. I can just put more in like this. Uh, some would call it cheating, but in my head, I'm like a, a, a wizard. Um, what uh, anyway so uh if i take a listen to the the tuba which is a solo tuba i've actually got doubled uh, on the octave i mean i could take away like the top line and then you just have A bit out of time. But instead, I decided to go with the, uh, you know, with, with a, a, a line on top. Because if I take away the bottom line, it loses a lot of bass in the track. And with it underneath, you get a, like a kind of deeper, more, you know, wider sound. And then when you put that with the uh, with the trombones, you've got four brass players all playing like these big he heavy staccatos together. I mean, like I say, because normally you would have like three trombones. Anyway, I mean, I could maybe put it up. I mean, if I put that with the percussion, that would probably be a bit too overpowering. But uh, overpowering, but you would still get the uh, the really strong kind of uh, brass percussion. <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, that was the premise behind that section, just showing off the uh, the staccato brass. I think in the strings, I was just uh, doing the same. doing like a, uh, a line that was carrying over and uh, yeah just uh, some yeah 
also, uh, so in, in, in between these gaps here, uh, in between the gaps between the actual sections, you get da 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 And then as you can see, like here, there's a, uh, a gap of a few bars. And, but uh, in the track, what you hear is this. You hear, uh, if I play the brass section, you hear a, like a deep kind of bleh sound. <laughs> And what I'm using here is I'm using the uh, Full Brass Ensemble Effects Patch, which is basically a, a collection of recorded uh, effects like you would find, you know, in many other kind of libraries. So, and I'm, I'm simply just uh, just playing random ones. And I, I put them in the gap to fill out the, the space to go along with the uh, metallic percussion. If you listen, I, I double this with metal. <laughs> He goes da 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 ching. So yeah, um, this is what they sound like. They're just basic uh, ensemble effects. I mean, I could have I could have used uh, perhaps you know the tuba and gone you know. I could have done it there, but when you get effects, uh, because the effects are recorded as an ensemble, you get a kind of different um, ambience to the actual tone. So when you get the da 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 da. It sounds a lot more kind of meaty. If brass can be meaty, they, it sounds meatier. Meatier? Anyway, so yeah, uh, that's the effects there. So moving along steadily. Now we've got like uh, this kind of big epic um, set. Well, not so much epic. This is kind of like where the action would be kicking off. It sounded like this, just to remind you. <laughs> So yeah, this in this section, basically what I've done is I've taken the uh, solo tuba again, and uh, you know, which which is basically underpinning the uh, the rhythm again, which sounds like. This. So not much going on there, but um, yeah, the, what I wanted to do in this section is use the uh, the twelve horn patch to really kind of uh, show what it's good at, and that is like sailing across the top of uh, over the top of all the rest of the music. So. If I just solo the, the 12 horns by themselves. And you see, the, the idea behind this is, is actually like quite a good idea, and I'm surprised not many people have done it before, is um, normally when you have a brass section in, uh, in an orchestra, you have six bra uh, French horn players. Sorry, uh, yeah, in your brass section, you have normally around six French horn players. That's, I think that's on the larger scale. Of course, you can have less, but not many people do more. And what they've done is recorded 12 French horn players all sitting together, which doesn't happen very often in, in the sampled world. You know, you, you, you end up with people playing like uh, having like a six horn patch and playing two notes. It just doesn't sound the same as having, you know, like having six, uh, having 12 players sitting all together. And the thing... Uh, that you get from this is you get a much bigger like uh you get a stronger kind of wider sound to the actual you know you get a much kind of <laughs> it's really hard to explain but when you put it over the top of um when you put it over the top of the rest of the music it it just stands out almost over anything. So if I if I just play it again, as you can hear, it it's basically sailing, it's screaming out over the top, and that's that's just coming from the recording. If I if I put that on, perhaps like I don't know, if I put it on a solo horn track, see how it stands. <laughs> They're the same instrument, but when you've got two of them together, you get a much grander sound. Um, yeah, I'll stop singing the praises of the 12 horns. Now. I, I just love it because, you know, for someone like me, the French horn is basically the the, the, the focus of everything. If I if I just so, uh, take the, um, if I just take it out of the track, take a listen to it without. <laughs> Thank you. 
You can hear how much it's filling out the space. Anyway, moving on. So uh, this is the first time I used trumpet in the track. And for this, I'm using um, I'm using the trumpet solo articulations. If it's ever got articulations in it, that means that it's got the uh, it's got the velocity changing patch. So if you know if you uh, play soft, you get um, staccato. If you play harder, and then if you hold down the uh, sustain pedal, you get. Uh, you get the legato. Is it legato on this one? Yeah, you get the true legato. And it, of course, it, as you can see here, the legato mode is polyphonic. And this is something they actually changed, I believe, uh, in the update to the original Cine Brass, is that now, uh, what it used to be is when you would um, hold down the sustain pedal, on a articulations patch you would just get a sustain you wouldn't get the legato so it would just be like like an old style sustain patch so there's there's no legato transition but what they've done is they've made it so that in the articulations patch when you hold the sustain pedal you get the true legato which is uh, which is where you get a legato transition between playing two notes so if you look down at the bottom here and I, I hold a note and then when I play another note over the top you see as you can see, I'm still playing the two notes together. As you can see, I'm holding two notes down, but it only sounds one. That's what a legato script does. But it also adds the, adds the transition, which is uh, the natural recreation of when someone moves from one note to another. The same as if you have a guitar string and you slide up to a note. They're recording that slide and put it in, put, putting it over the top. Yeah. Um, but the polyphonic legato is actually kind of cool, but I'll show you that on the uh, solo trombones in a minuet. So yeah, on this, uh, with the trumpets here, I'm just basically playing like a little... And what I actually did here, uh, yeah, what I was going to do, but I, I think I didn't in the end, was I wanted to show that the, uh, the triple tonguing uh, effect. So they've got a triple tonguing uh, script, which is where if you hold this, this, no, wrong patch, if you hold this key here, which I need to find it on my keyboard, hang on. This one. So if you hold this, and then uh, as you can see here, if I hold this down and push any key, you hear it actually, um, what it does is it, it registers how long you held the note for, and then it will triple tongue the note uh, in relation to what you put. So if I just push really quick. Let's pull this down. If I hold it down a bit longer, oh. you see how the script did that then? So if I hold it, so down, off, and it, it measures how long I held that note down for, and it will put that gap so it'll be in time. So. Yeah, so that's basically what the triple tonguing does, and of course, of course, it's good enough to do it so if you actually play those notes. So yeah, I uh, just wanted to show what the triple tonguing thing was and that it was in Cine Brass Pro. I saw somebody asking about that on a forum. So uh, yeah, the triple and double tonguing is still in there in Cine Brass Pro. But uh, if you're, um, you know, if you're getting down to the programming stage like this, it, you know, you might not want to use it. It's more of a live thing if you're playing it live and you want to do some triple tonguing. Of course, you can just like I've done here, you can just put in, what have I got, five there, so, it's five tongue in, five tongue, that sounds rude, anyway, um, so this is basically just a rhythmic passage, just to, um, just to stab along underneath, just, you know, give a little bit of spice to the, uh, the brass section that's going on here, so, And what it's doing basically is it's doing a, a bit of a polyrhythm. It's just doing a little bit of an offbeat rhythm, uh, just adding a bit of rhythmic interest. You can't really hear it too well, and that was that was by design. I just wanted it to um, just kind of like throw in the little extra notes. If I play it along with the tuba. And 
maybe with the trombone. <laughs> So as you can hear, it's kind of playing off of the other um, brass instruments. So yeah, now let's take a look at the uh, solo tuba. What I'm doing with the tuba here is I'm playing it kind of, kind of how it's supposed to be played uh, in in big chords. Um, so for whatever reason, this is a little bit out of time. So let me just drag that across. Uh, right. So what I'm doing here is uh, again, this is the uh, this is solo trombone articulations patch. I think I already showed this, but I will show it again because I'm a nice guy. Okay, uh, solo trombones. It's the articulations patch, and like I say, it's got legato. It's got um, an eighth note staccato, quarter note macato, half note macato, and sustain pedal. Uh, the sustain is when the pedal is held down. Of course, you can change these. You know, if I wanted to, I could make it so that uh, the short was all the way up to maybe if I move this up to ninety, I'm probably going to mess it all up. In fact, yeah. So you, I could move this so that basically. The quarter note now will not sound until I go over 113. So I could move this up to 113. I believe this was like an 85 or something. So I've, I've probably just messed it up, but whatever. So uh, yeah, if I go back to uh, the actual MIDI information here, what I've done is I've played it kind of how it's supposed to be in chords. So uh, this section sounds like this. So as you can see, so, uh, the reason I was saying it's articulation, I just wanted to show that I've written an actual uh, rhythmic passage here using the staccato and the different marcatos. Uh, so up here is when you've got like the the quarter to half note marcato when it's in the middle it's around about the quarter note marcato and when it's down a bit lower it's staccato so it sounds like this so i'm actually basically writing a rhythmic passage like you would do on a piece of paper you know And as you can hear with the short notes, like I was trying to show at the beginning, but probably failed miserably, it can do the uh, the quick short notes very well. And um, one of the other things I wanted to show about the, the solo trombone, somebody was asking about this, is how well can it do chords in um, in uh, legato? Uh, my, my buffer's up quite high, so there's a bit of delay. So if I'm playing in a weird kind of time, it's because uh, there's a little bit of lag on the uh, keyboard. So again, there's uh, there's actual uh, true legato on the trombone, which was something that was missing and actually requested quite a lot from the original Cine Brass. Uh, was you know a, a solo trombone with articulations. And of course, you can play in chords. How hard is this? I missed the chord. And again, you can you can move the mod wheel while you're playing live. I should probably have this open while I'm doing this so you can actually see the notes I'm playing. But so if I've got this open here, yeah, so if you look down here you can see like the notes. And the good thing with the polyphonic legato is that it actually keeps, um, it actually lets you do more than one legato line at once. So, like I was mentioning, how you get the uh, legato transition. Oh, need to hold the sustain pedal. You can actually do, uh, if you do more than one at the same time, it will do legato transitions for both of them. So, it figures out where the lines are moving and it does it correctly. So, if you've got like. Which is which is a really nice thing, particularly like I say, if you're playing stuff like playing something, you know, like really where where the notes are moving. And it moves the uh, legato correctly, which is cool. And uh, I'm sorry if I didn't show the, the trombone off, whoever. I, I think it was 
in fact i can't remember somebody asked me to show that and again the uh the, the tuba which is also something that was uh requested from the first um library that was added in pro is the tuba solo and this is again the same principle the uh the true legato is on the sustain pedal and then you've got the so if i hold down the sustain pedal and if you wanted chords distortion because I don't think tubers are meant to do this and they've got a really nice soft tone to them when you when you've got the low dynamics and those of you who know me know I, I love low dynamics on on samples And I, I believe this has also got the uh, the triple tonguing script. Which is uh, an awesome thing. Uh, so moving on to the final section, which is my big kind of chorusy epic uh, thematic thing, which sounds like this. <laughs> For those working composers out there uh, who know how, uh, how sometimes how short those deadlines can be, they've actually added uh, something which is pretty cool here, uh, which is the low chords. For those of you who have ever seen Cine Samples Cine Orc, it's a similar principle. Basically, what they've done is they've recorded, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they've recorded uh, chords on the brass uh, with the ensemble all sitting there together, and then so you push one key and you get like that chord in minor or major depending on where you push it on the keyboard so uh, and this saves a lot of time because most of the uh, not most of the time but quite a lot of the time brass is used just as a you, they're basically set up as, as sustained chords to go underneath the track so if, if I push and yeah if I push a key here and using the mod wheel I can move this up This is a huge time saver as well because it, the 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 brass is actually orchestrated correctly. Um, it's it's basically they put the the notes in the right place for each instrument, which for someone like me is uh, an awesome thing. And of course you can you know you can move to the major. So you've got majors up high, uh, minors sorry up high, and then majors down low. So so if I do something like. Can create these really fast kind of chord changes, uh, chord patterns really quick. If you didn't notice that, it's actually, um, I'm not sure if there's a legato script in there. But there is definitely a legato script. Uh, there's definitely uh, a, a, a mono thing. So you, you push one key at a time and it will move between the notes. And I think the voice leading is actually correct, which is uh, pretty cool.
And again, this can save a lot of time. Um, if you listen to what I've, I've done here, I've done a very typical kind of chord progression. So if you listen to this. So as you can see, that's, you know, that sounds brilliant. And a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but some people would call things like this cheating. Um, but the way I see it is if you were planning on having um, chords on the brass in your track anyway, and all you've got is samples, why not use pre-recorded chords? Because that's what you would be writing anyway. I mean, like I could do a, you know, a minor chord here. If I was to play the same on solo trombones, I need to solo it as well. But if I was to play the same on solo trombone. Ooh. Sure, they sound great, but I, and I'm aware that the tuba's there as well. If I put the tuba in. So like if you were to play a chord. you could do that and it wouldn't be cheating because I I technically wrote each note individually but if you're planning on having chords like this anyway I, I don't understand why this would be cheating because it's essentially the same thing so for me this is a perfect time um, it's a perfect uh, time in heart time saver geez when I'm talking I forget what I'm saying sometimes and uh, yeah, and then of course we've got um, so over the top of this we've got uh, a solo French uh, solo French horn. In in the original Cine Brass there was a solo French horn already, but it uh, I don't believe it had articulations, which is the the short the. Let me have a look. In the original one we we had horn solo, and it was true legato, but it only had one dynamic layer, and some people wanted solo horns with. Uh, articulations which they've added here and they wanted it with uh, more dynamic layers which they went and did which was very nice of them so if we this is this solo horn uh, legato so now I can actually move the mod wheel So you, it's got a very nice tone to it, you know. I played that very bad. I'm blaming that playing on the lag, by the way, the lag between my, between the keyboard and the computer. But, so yeah, and, and again, this has got the uh, the polyphonic. So if you wanted to play like uh, chordal stuff, you know, let me make sure it's actually in polyphonic mode. For those of you who aren't aware, I know some people don't actually know yet. This uh, this is how you change between. Uh, monophonic, which is where you can only play one note at a time. So if I play three notes at the same time, it'll pick the last note I played. Whereas the polyphonic is if I play three at the same time. You know, so you could actually play um, chordal lines, yeah. Again, my playing is a little bit off because of the lag, but if you were to play, you know, you could play a polyphonic line like this and then program it, fix it up later, and then of course add mod wheel, you know. So there you go. So they, they've, you know, they've done the French horn properly, and I, I do love the fact that you can do it poly, uh, polyphonic, which is. Uh, a necessity these days and so going back to the track uh, what I did is I, I played the chord with just a French horn line over the top solo French horn soloed the wrong thing there there we go So 
did my, my typical theme, which I believe was doubled up in the strings up here. <laughs> Which is all good, and I I uh, did a counterish melody with the trumpet using its uh, its legato holding down the sustain on the articulations patch. to round it off. Um, I've, of course, I didn't show every uh, single articulation in this, but I will I will show you this now. So if I just load this up as number nine, so uh, let's take a ganders. Right, so uh, let me just minimize this so I don't get confused. So Cine Brass Pro, you get uh, trumpet, so you get solo articulations. And just, I'll say this one more time so you remember, the articulations, uh, if you want to see what the articulations look like, look here. If you want to see what the, uh, legato looks like look at this patch for reference because they're all the same essentially and then uh, yeah so these are like the three different types sometimes you get sustains and shorts which is basically articulations but without the marcato parts in between so uh you get trumpet solo articulations which looks like this and true legato looks like this and then you get muted i didn't play any muted ones in this track um so if i just load these up this must be a long video by the way i apologize I thought you might enjoy an over, you know, a full on look at it all. So, um, so here we go. Here we've got the muted articulation. So, you know, short means short. Uh, sorry, soft means short. And again, uh, if I hold down the sustain pedal. you get the sustain. But this is an ensemble, so normally you wouldn't play that many chords, but... And it can go very loud. That's very soft on the... Uh... That's the mute articulation. Now, then you get the uh, the harmon mute articulation. So take a listen to these, which is like your kind of uh, noirish sounding brass. That's how it sounds to me, anyway. Now, this one, uh, when you get the sustains and shorts, I believe it's uh, you don't hold the sustain pedal to get the long note. You just uh, so soft if you push the key soft. If you push it soft, you get the short note. If you push hard, you get the sustain. Push this off. See which notes I'm allowed to push here. And like I said, this is like your noirish kind of. And you can, you know, you know, I've, I've, you know, you know, you know, I'll stop saying, you know, but you do know. And if you don't know, what have you been watching for the last 45 minutes? So, uh, solo horn, we went over those. Uh, I didn't show the articulation, so we'll load those up while that's loading. Let's take a look at, we get the horns ensemble stopped and flow. We showed that horns ensemble triad chords. I'll show you those next. So, uh, the solo articulations on the horn is again, the same as all the other ones. So soft is staccato. Uh, harder is marcato. And then 
holding the sustain pedal is. It's the legato. So uh, let's take a look at the triad chords from the horn ensemble. So this is the ensemble. This is kind of like the uh, the chords I played earlier, but just on the actual French horns. If it says horns, it means French horns, in case anyone was unaware to that fact. And I believe these ones are articulations. Imagine it says articulations after. I imagine that's just because it's uh, the, the title's so long they didn't put it. So yeah, if you push uh, a soft velocity between 0 and 79, you get an eighth note, and then you get a marcato, and there's also a sustain. So you get... Sustain pedal down. So these are again time savers, and if you're planning on chords, this one, uh, this patch is actually pretty cool because you actually get the the short notes as well. pretty cool and then the, the seventh chords is essentially the same as the um the triad ensemble except you get the the seventh on the top so you've got your articulations you know you've got your short notes and you hold the sustain pedal you get your longs Seventh chords will always be jazzy chords to me, because uh, because I, I have no clue what I'm doing, ever. So um, yeah, then we've got the twelve horns articulations. I showed the um, the twelve horns legato, but the articulations are like this. And this is one of those um, short and uh, it hasn't got the marcatos. It's got the shorts and sustains. So you play softly. And then you play hard. So there's no sustain pedal here, see? Again, my playing's a bit off, but it it's, you know, it goes all the way down here and you can set it so it's only sustained and then of course shorts only I'm not sure why I played that but Hit you all then, I apologise, that was a microphone. And of course you can play course. And it's all mod wheel control, why not, eh? Uh, 12 horns, true legato, we did mutes. So this is muted 12 horns. There's no legato or shorts here, it's just sustains, so. And 
that could, just on a side note if you're a, if you're a sound designer and you like and you like manipulating sound the low muted 12 horn is good for pads as you can hear it's very quiet but it's, uh, it's got a good tone to it uh trombones we did with the trulegato uh muted trombones again because every brass players seem to love these mutes they like to stick things in their instrument that sounded rude i apologize um okay so this is articulations and when you get articulations you get um your shorts your marcatos sustain pedal is sounds beauty and then we've got uh, the tuba solo we did We've got the full brass ensemble, these are the effects, and then we've got high code, high co codes, chords, and low chords. I use the low chords, but if I just play the high chords, I believe it's um, the same principle, so you still get your minors and majors. It's just that it's played uh, with brass uh, orchestrated higher up. There we go. Oh, it's, and it's it's got the shorts as well. So you play hard, you get sustain, you play soft, you get. If I put it on sustains only, so I could just do my chords. That chord sounded very noirish, I like it delete that and then we've got the low so that's pretty much everything in the library and i again this is one of those videos that i intended to be shorter than it is but i hope you've enjoyed looking at everything um i tried to show it as best as i can I, I apologize if the track wasn't exactly what you wanted to hear but um uh, the purpose of the track was to demonstrate how um as, same with all the videos i make they're, they're to demonstrate how i would use them in a working context because I, I could have written a track that was just brass um, and showed all, all of these off uh, like you know showed off every feature of every patch but I would never do that when I'm writing a piece for a game or a film or something I would I would basically write it like I've written it here and so I, I wanted to show how how it fits in and how many patches I'm using I'm, I'm not particularly using that many patches when you look at it you know I'm using one two three four Five. I'm using like six different patches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm using eight patches, and you know I, I've got twelve horns here. I've got like, solo trumpet. I've got I've got all these things. So uh, in my videos, I try and uh, you know I try and show how it would be used if you were actually writing with them and how well they blend together. And so what I'll do just before we go is I'll play the track again, but just soloed brass. Uh, so you can hear how well it melts together. So, um, so yeah, let's take a listen to just, just the uh, the track, just as brass. <laughs>
as you can hear, it melts together very well and it sounds like a, you know, it sounds like a real brass section. To me, it does. It sounds very strong and powerful and uh, and that to me is is the most important thing, how it sounds. And to me, it sounds fantastic. Particularly, my favourite part is the 12 horns um, legato. I, I absolutely love it. As you could tell by my little bit of a, a lust session in the middle. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much it everything in the library and, and just to just to uh, note all i used was um the cine brass pro patches i didn't use any of the core patches so if i just load them up here uh, i only use cine brass pro patches in this track so you can get a pretty big brass uh, section with just the cine brass pro but uh if you like the sound of cine brass pro you uh, in the original cine brass you also get um sections that you don't get in cine brass pro like the best way to say it is is they both work well together so if, if you want you know if you like the sound of cine brass pro you'd be better served by getting both uh you can get away with just having one or the other but you're missing out if you, if you do that you're missing out on on certain things so like on cine brass you know you're getting the, the chimbasso the bass trombone uh you're getting really cool combos you know you're getting uh you're getting the horn ensemble uh true legato and articulations so they, they work best if you get them together like i've got here but uh, just to show that you know if you wanted to buy either or I, I was showing what you can do with just the cine brass pro and i've also got a video before this which is just cine brass so you can see how they stack up and you know where they're useful so yeah um i hope you guys have enjoyed this uh video this short little video i did today um i hope you enjoyed it if, if not i'm sorry for wasting your time um if, if you're not already, I, I never normally say things like this, but um, if, if you enjoy these videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel because when I update them, you will be alerted to when they're up so that it, you know, because I've had people message me and say, oh, why didn't you tell me this was up? And I, I don't have the time to tell everybody when when I put a video up. Uh, so, um, so yeah, if you, if you follow the uh, the YouTube channel, that uh, would be great. And also you can find me at H2, uh, at H2 Daniel on Twitter. Uh, where I also post when I put a video up. So if you wanted to be alerted to when it is at H2, as in the number H2 Daniel. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found it useful and feel free to comment. And if you send me a message, I will try and reply. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask me questions and stuff. I do try and reply to everything. So uh, thank you very much for, for watching and I shall see you all again next time. Thanks. Bye bye.